look you have to prepare for spring planning every two weeks how are you gonna do that exactly hmm? you gotta have a game plan what you gonna do every two weeks you gotta have stories ready for them or if not they have nothing to work with so you gotta figure this out and that's what we're talking about when you come back <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs>
uh, feature and make sure I get that vetted and make sure I speak with all the, the different stakeholders and get all that requirements done way up front so it's kind of waterfally but you know you know I, I just work that way I have to know what it is that we're going to be doing and make sure it's meeting the, the, the need and solving the problem <laughs> before I put it in the store and give it to a developer I just have to know that's just how I work so I find that out first but then I might break it down into different stories that go into different sprints. So you know what you want to get done for the sprint. You'd have written those stories already, you'd have vetted the stories that make sure the acceptance criteria is good. That has to be done before the sprint grooming. Sprint grooming is where the, the development team usually, it's just a developing thing, they will look through the backlog and they will look through, through what's available because the backlog has to be prioritized. Stick a pin. I might be going too fast for some of you. Backlog. Backlog is your list of items that you need to get developed. They are in the order in which you want to have them done based on priority. Some people based on size and time, but most of the time it's just based on the priority of which you want to get these things done. So when the developer goes into your tool, they see all of what you want to get done and they just keep picking from the things at the top. They generally don't go below and pick from the bottom or in the middle. They pick from the top because that's the priority which you've laid it out. That's what we mean when we say backlog, <laughs> okay? All right, let's go back to where we're talking about. We're saying that the stories have to be written and have to be in the backlog for something called the sprint grooming. Sprint grooming is where the developers go and look at the backlog and say, okay, for this sprint, we think we can do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one. And they're knowing where to stop because they would have looked at the stories and they would have said, I estimate it to be this amount of story points or whatever measurement you use to quantify the amount of effort it takes to make, um, to build this story out, right? So they have a measurement in their head of how much effort it's gonna to take to do this so they know they can do up to a certain amount within two weeks. Um, there's a whole different world of how things are estimated. That can be a whole nightmare or a wonderful thing based on who's doing it, right? So there's a lot of there's a lot of data and a lot of information about how to estimate. But you don't have to worry about that as a business analyst. Estimations on the development team. What you want to know is which ones they're they're able to pick. So during their grooming, they're looking at the stories, they're just vetting it, like it's a very quick thing, they're not really uh, evaluating all of it, they're just saying, okay, I think we can do this and this and this and this and this and this. When they come for the sprint planning, based on the stories that they have picked out, every developer will go through, the, normally they do this like two or three days before the sprint planning so they can know which stories they need to dig into and they look through the acceptance criteria, they read the story, they try to get a feel for it and understanding of it. When they come to the sprint planning, that's when they come with all their questions, they want to know what's going to happen with, when this goes here and that goes here and they have a whole bunch of information that they want to get out from you who wrote the acceptance criteria for that user story. So that's the whole process. So it starts off with you as a business analyst, prepping the story, getting the story ready, and then it could be you or it could be the scrum master, it could be somebody else who prioritizes all the stories that you've written, and then the development team goes in and says, okay, based on the list of prioritized stories, here's the one we think we can do for this sprint. That's all done before the sprint planning. When you get to the sprint planning, this is normally a meeting that takes hours. So you, for me, <laughs> sprint planning could start at nine. It doesn't end until 12 or one o'clock. Sometimes we get lunch brought in because it's a whole day activity. Some people go even longer than it could be the entire day because you sit in the room and you're talking. You're talking about the requirements. You're talking about what you want to get done. You're talking about what's feasible and everybody's inputting. All the developers are looking at the story together, even though it might be only assigned to one developer, everybody's looking at it to say, okay, make sure you do this and make sure this is gonna happen and make sure we use this component or this or this. It's like a collaborative effort to make sure that they understand what needs to be built. And that way, when we, when we spend the time up front understanding the requirements, it's very, very likely that what we get 
actually matches what we wanted. So that's why it's important for you to be in there because you wrote the story and you know what you want to get done. So that's why the meeting is so long because they're going to go through every single story you've written. They're going to go through every single acceptance criteria and they're going to make sure they understand it. And if they need to make a change, you'll have to make the change right there. So normally they don't want to agree to a story unless they all agree to all the acceptance criteria. So sometimes it might be in the sprint planning and you have to go in there and make changes based on what they're saying. So you have to be agile too, like you gotta be moving with them and keeping abreast of what they're saying because sometimes what you wrote, they have technical challenges and so there's another way you could do it which accomplishes the same end result but doesn't give them so much of a technical challenge. So that's why it's important. Now during the sprint planning, after they've understood the, um, the acceptance criteria, they will vote. Sometimes they have like cards and they will say, I think this is a five story point. This one says it's a two story point. This one says it's a three story point. So when there is differences like that, they can say, okay, why did you say it's two? And why did you say three? And why did you say five? And they all agree it might be a four point. So it's things like that, that all the team comes together and make sure they have the right estimate because the estimate is not really on time. It's normally on complexity. How complex is this? And that will determine how much effort it will take and you know stuff like that so that's kind of how the spring planning goes it's usually a very long meeting it's draining it's stressful but you as a business analyst you have to know your stuff you get in there and you know what you've written and you know what you want to get accomplished because sometimes they start firing questions at you what if it's an empty state what if the user doesn't have the right login what if it's a person that's coming in from the CRM what if all these different scenarios which I hope you would have thought about before <laughs> so that you covered it in your acceptance criteria. But in the event that you didn't cover it, it's a collaborative effort. They'll say, well, I didn't think about that. What would, what would be the best suggestion here? And they give you suggestions that you can just put that in the acceptance criteria right away. So it's not like you have to know everything, but you should be familiar enough with the use case, familiar enough with what you're trying to accomplish so that if there's a change based on the technicalities of the story that you can still make the right decision right so that's what the sprint planning is it's very important because whatever you agree on in the sprint planning that's what's going to make it into the sprint now you know you have all these people working on the story you got the qa working on it you got the developers working on it they're taking up all this time you better make sure it's really solving the problem right you don't want to have to go back and do another sprint to fix stuff so that's really what the sprint planning is. Um, at the end of the day, they will, you know, um, assign the stories to the sprint. Like if they're using Jira, they'll assign the story to the to the sprint so that everybody can look and see all the stories that have been picked up in the sprint. And sometimes when they finish the sprint, they may even pick all the stories from the backlog if they have time. But even if you planned it in the sprint planning, it doesn't mean that if you have time, you can't pick something else. You know, you're, just gonna, you're not going to sit down and be like twiddling your thumbs because it's not been planned. But all they would do is if they have free time, they would send you a note, send the product owner a note and say, hey, we can pick up a story or two because we have a few, a few days before the sprint ends. And then you add it to the sprint. So there's two parts going on. There's understanding the stories and there's like the management of the sprint itself, which the Scrum Master normally does. Um, and the planning is to make sure that you all agree on what the acceptance criteria is and make sure you have enough stories that each person has uh, something to work on for the next two weeks or however long your sprint is. That's it for now. I really hope this was useful for you. And if you have not subscribed, uh-uh, click that subscribe button. You better go do it right now. <laughs> Look, I really enjoy you guys. I'm hopeful that you find this video useful and I will see you next time. You're